Yo, uh, it's been a while since I've made this many deck profiles. What's going on with ya, big dog? And I hope you are having an amazing weekend. Um, I actually decided to do something really cool, something that I think everyone can take advantage of, and it's actually porting in some of my deck profiles that I did on Twitch onto YouTube. Now with these particular decks, we decided to play them over the course of a week and a week of a half, trying our best to perfect these particular decks. And I wanted to give you so many over this weekend, I thought it was best not only to show Twitch, but also to show you. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the deck profile. Reference it if you need to. There's gonna be quite the few this week and hopefully more to come. And of course, if you wanna see me go through the process of building and playing these decks, you can always catch me on Twitch, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Sometimes I may pop up on a different day, but I'm getting beside myself. Let's jump on in so I can show you the deck profile. Sword Soul is the best strategy in Yu-Gi-Oh. Seriously, post -burst of, burst of Destiny Sword Soul is an incredible strategy that isn't just Iris of the Sword Soul. Not only does it allow you to one card synchro summon it actually mimics some of the other strategies that were tier zero for their time. Not saying that Sword Soul is a tier zero deck, but in comparison, this deck is Sky Striker. This deck is Zodiac. This deck is Invoked. Our graveyard, if you remember. In this video, not only will I be going over why Sword Soul or how Sword Soul works, but also explaining to you why Sword Soul is a very, very powerful deck. Starting off with the monsters, it's gonna be fairly standard. Three copies of Sword Soul Moyi two copies of Sword Soul Taya. Basically, Moi and Taya are your normal summons of the deck, allowing you to basically get a free token monster, token tuner monster to your side of the field by either revealing a worm or banishing a Sword Soul or worm monster respectively for both of them. And uh, then they have some really interesting effects on top of that, allowing you to foolish burial a worm or Sword Soul and or draw a card. So these cards are very, very, very important for the strategy, allowing it to be your normal summon and your play starters. If these starters do get disrupted, you have your extenders and sword soul strategist long Yuan, allowing you to go all the way up into synchro 10 with one card, just like how Sky Strikers or Zodiacs would. It only requires a discard of a monster and can inflict that 1200 burn damage, which can be really important when you're going into the later stages of your match, which can result in time. And then of course, uh, some players have a negative light on Incredible Clacy of the Virtuous, but what I figured out about Sword Soul is that it is a better going second deck. You have one card starter, so basically the rest of your hand can be built on dismantling your opponent's boards. And because of how worms have always worked, you just have natural abilities to be able to break opponent's boards. So I opted to build this deck for going second, which Incredible Clacia does take advantage of. Also, a thing I want to talk about Incredible Clacia is that not only is this a 4th, 5th, and 6th uh, Moyi and a 3rd, 4th, and 5th Taya, it also is a tuner monster. So in the instance that your Tia or your Moyi gets negated, well, I mean, tuner, non-tuner, go ahead and synchro summon anyways at worst case scenario. This card is incredible and brings tons of value, especially when going second. From here, there's three copies of Sword Soul Emergence, allowing you to add a Sword Soul card from your deck to your hand, or monster from your deck to your hand, but also allowing you to add a Worm Monster if you control a Synchro Monster. This card is really, really good, as it's your reinforcement of the army. And then I also play Sword Soul Sacred Summit. Because the deck does go second, or is built to go be able to go second, I do need a Monster Reborn to allow me to extend, but also this card is just outright bonkers. In the mid game, having a free access to a free summon of one of your starter monsters, which is essentially a one card synchro eight. It can also be a one card synchro seven if you decide to send Tia and Taye. I don't know how to say this card's name right. And if Taye is your play starter with sacred summon in hand, you can synchro summon into everything. I just explained why the Inclarable Ecclesia is amazing in going second. Allow me to explain it again. Some people say it's not good in the Tingy version. I don't see exactly why they would say that. Because if you're going second and your opponent has an established board, this is a free one card starter. And then your Tingy cards are also starters. This isn't restrictive like Cyber Dragon. You can control monsters. Your opponent just has to control more monsters than you do to be able to pop off with your combo. So, um, and, and unless they have some other ulterior motive to why uh, Tingy is an incredible Inclacia conflict, uh, there really isn't one in my opinion. 
Uh, moving forward, there's two copies of Sword Soul Blackout. This card is a godsend for the worm strategy, allowing you to destroy two, one card on your field and two cards on your opponent. This is essentially a modern day two pronged attack. And now that I'm talking about Sword Soul Blackout, uh, uh, people in the Twitch chat, they, I forgot your name. Go ahead and say your name, say hello. if Cause you reminded me of it is to play the Tingy Blue Monster. I'm gonna talk about that a little later, but I don't play it in here. But this card is just completely bonkers. It's, it's, it's really good. Uh, the free destruction is amazing and the banishment is amazing. Moving forward for the Tingye engine, three copies of Vessel of the Dragon Cycle, essentially a reinforcement of the army for all your Tingye monsters. Two pronged attack, Icarus attack, it don't matter. Uh, Tingye Sword Soul in three. So Vessel is really good because it serves as a reinforcement of army when you have a non uh, effect monster on the field, which is your tuner tokens or your link monster. Um, and there's a two card combo to prevent you from being light hand trapped in this deck. So no nib, no effect Valor, no ogre, none of that. It's really good. Next is three copies of Tingye Spirit Ashuna. This is a free special summon. Two copies of Vishuda. This is another card that inspired me to play this deck uh, geared towards being able to go second really well because this card helps you break boards. I don't know if people really respected that inside of the card. Um, and it's a free special summon to the side of the field. And then two copies of Adhara because it allows you to gain those worm monsters to your hand. So we don't play blue and I don't think blue is a very bad card. Uh, the reason why I don't play it is because it requires you to already have sort, a card like Swords Hole Blackout on the field with blue in graveyard to be able to pop an additional card. Uh, if you have your Swords Hole Blackout set up, odds are you're probably in a winning position. It just feels like a win more card. Not saying that it's a bad card whatsoever, but in a lot of times when it does pop off, it's just there to just win even harder, uh, which isn't bad. Sometimes you do need it. A lot of times I figured that if you have Blackout to pop Procket's effect, you don't. Moving forward from the Tenye, Tenye engine, uh, three copies of Pot of Desires, the freest card inside of this strategy. It's just crazy how you can Pot of Desires and essentially lose nothing, but you should already know how Desires is best draw card of all time. Yeah, it's better than Pot of Greed. Moving forward, um, since this is a deck that is proc to built or built to go second, I decided to play some really good blowout go second cards. Uh, a little bit earlier, uh, we were actually playing hand traps, but I decided to drop it in favor of cards that allow me to be able to break my opponent's board because I really don't care what you make. If I have the correct cards, I can just play Sword Soul right through it. One copy of Call by the Grave for my opponent's hand traps and critical graveyard cards. Three copies of Forbidden Chalice. This card eats Shed All Window for breakfast and spits it out like it's nobody's lunch. It also allows me to dress certain cards on the field. Three copies of Dark Ruler No More for those negation heavy boards. Allow me to just break your board and keep playing. Three copies of Triple Tactics Talent. This is a card that I probably could drop down to two. I'm actually now struggling between this card and the next, but this card not only allows you to go first and be able to draw two cards if your opponent, or look at your opponent hand if you have the extenders, or just snatch an opponent's card when going second after they make that negation board. It also is uh, just amazing when going first because uh, it does that thing and second, it does that other thing. Moving forward, uh, two copies of Lightning Storm. This is the card that I'm very conflicted with with Triple Tactics Talent. Like you can either play three Lightning Storms and two Talents or two Talents and three Lightning Storms. Did I say that the same way? I think I said that the same way, but you get exactly what I'm saying. This card allows you to pretty much destroy your opponent's entire front row or back row. And it pretty much does force your opponent to, if you have the negate, you have to use it. If not, I can get rid of your most critical thing and keep playing Yu-Gi-Oh. How is Desires free in this deck? It makes sense to save for Virtual World since they can shuffle back any banished card. But do Sword Souls have something like that? No, they don't have anything like that. Uh, but the thing about that is uh, you really don't care about what you banish. There's not too many times where you'll banish three. If you play three of every single card in your deck, the odds of you banishing even one of those three of is so low, it's, it's negligible. Um, a lot of times those two free cards really helps you out in the long game. Um, especially when it comes to getting into your combo pieces, getting into those disruptive pieces. It doesn't matter what you banish. Uh, 10 cards from the top of your deck to draw two is, is a ridiculous price to pay. It's like, it's not even a price. Uh, moving towards the extra deck, uh, one copy of uh, Sword Soul Sovereign. This card gains 100 attack for each banished card, which I guess could come up with Pot of Desires. And also allows you to banish a card when cards are banished, which 
could come up for Pot of Desires. That's cool. One copy of Baron de Flor. This card is fairly awesome. If you can't afford it, it's not the end of the world, but it's a really good card. One card of Rudy Rose Dragon. We're sticking to that banishing. This card does come up, allowing you to banish those graveyards. Really important cards in the opponent's graveyard. Uh, one copy of Shao Fang. This allows us to prevent us from being light hand trapped, and I'll show you in a second. Uh, one copy of Shin Shin. This card can be made by uh, either doing the light hand trap method or banishing a sword soul spell card. Uh, two copies of Boxia. When worms were created, they gave us some really busted support, but the only deck that could really use it was Yang Zing. Now, eight years later, we're actually getting a deck that can actually use it in a competitive se uh, sequence, and this is a ridiculously busted card. Two copies of Shi Shao. Uh, really good. Banishing and negates. Crimson Blader for the mirror match in any matchup that wants to uh, special summon level 5 or higher monsters. Ironically, this is pretty good against Eltlich too. <laughs> Draco Berserker of Tinye. Uh, this card is really good because Spellgates. Yazi. Yes, you already know how many times Yazi has been used in, in a Yu-Gi-Oh deck. Shaman Monk of the Tinye because it's a free special summon and two copies of Monk of the Tinye. Shanya of the Tinye. My apologies. But that is it for the main board and the extra deck all right guys so moving on into the combos uh since this is technically a mid-range deck it doesn't have like any in-depth super deep combos but there is something that i want to know i want you to know uh moi plus any sword soul or worm monster uh is pretty much that's gonna be the starting hand a lot of people um a lot of people would uh try to extend even further and go further but nib is a card that is starting to be main decked in people's decks so I'm going to not only say that this is full combo, quote unquote, if you're going first, this is probably what you should end under. It's really, really smart in my opinion. So our next three cards are going to be Dark Ruler No More, Lightning Storm, Dark Ruler No More. That is, that's a pretty busted hand for going second. Uh, we're going to go ahead, Normal Summon Moi, and then reveal the Ashuna to be able to special summon that token to our side of the vault. And then we'll synchro with the uh, Moi and the token to be able to synchro summon into our Shi Shao. Use the effect of Shi Shao and Moi. Make sure to use Moi as chain link too. We're gonna draw another Lightning Storm. Clearly I did not shuffle correctly, but we'll draw a Lightning Storm and then we'll add from our decks to our hand, our Sword Soul Blackout. So if you look at this particular board right here, Sword Soul Blackout allows you to destroy two cards on your opponent's side of the field and Shi Shao is in the gate. Essentially giving you two disruptions with two cards, but I still have five cards in hand to still be able to play Yu-Gi-Oh, which is a little bit unfair. Uh, the second combo sequence I want to show you is actually an even better than full combo and is the reason why I genuinely want to run multiple copies of Sacred Sword Soul Summit, but I ain't going to. What you're going to do here is start off with Sword Soul Emergence, uh, using its effect to be able to add from your deck to your hand. Where is that card? You add your Sword Soul Tia, Tie. And then you can go ahead and normal summon that Tie, banishing that Sword Soul Emergence. To be able to special summon that token to your side of the field, don't use the effect of emergence to level modulate. Synchro with your Taie and your token to be able to go into your Sword Soul Grandmaster Shi Shao. Using the effect of Shi Shao as Chain Link 1, Taie as Chain Link 2. We will send that Moi Yi from the deck to the graveyard. And then we'll add Sword Soul Blackout. From here, we'll activate Sword Soul Sacred Summit, being able to special summon Moi Yi to the side of the field which will then trigger its effect, allowing you to reveal Sword Soul Blackout to special summon said token. And then what I like to do here is synchro with both of these monsters into uh, that Ad Emancipator Risen Dragite. Uh, so you right here, you get a spell and trap negation. You also get a monster effect negation and you get Sword Soul Blackout, allowing you to be able to destroy two cards on the field. The last thing I want to show you about this is why the Tenye strategy is so good. Uh, the Tenya strategy is amazing because uh, within two cards, uh, you can prevent yourself from being Nibiru'd, you can prevent yourself from being Ogred, Ash Blossom, or not Ash Blossom, Nibiru'd, Effect Veilered, and Ogred, as well as Cypher and Gear gamma on your important cards. It requires any two ways to Tenya monsters, and I believe one of them has to be the Ashuna, but it's pretty dope. What you're going to do is special summon the Ashuna to your side of the field, and then use it for a link in this particular sequence. We'll link off that Ashina into the Monk of the Tinye, and since we control no effect monsters, we can special summon the Adara. Use the effect of Ashina banishing itself to special summon Tinye Spirit Vashuda, and then the Vashuda plus the Adara into another uh, Synchro Summon will Synchro into Boxy of Brightness of the Yang Zing. 
Poxia being able to destroy the monk of the Tingye spot to summon the Adara to the side of the field. You can then synchro with Boxia and the uh, monk, or Boxia and the Adara, my apologies, into your Xiao Feng, which allows you to play freely without the, you know, limitations of being hit by a light monster. Now, Fatboy Marvel did make something really, really good. He said that if you just so happen to open, where is that card? If you just so happen to open Long Yuan with pretty much the same combo, I'm pretty sure you can do this with the same combo. Uh, Fat Boy, allow me, if I'm doing this wrong, go ahead and correct me. I think what you would have to do here is you'd have to special summon the Adara first, and then you go Long Yuan, discarding the Ashuna to special summon and gain a token. Then from here, you synchro summon with both Long Yuan and your token. You synchro summon into your Baron de Flor. And then from here, you can use the effect of your Ashuna to be able to special summon from your deck to your side of the field, which is going to be your Vashuda. And then the Vashuda Vasta Adara for another Synchro Summon into your Boxia. Uh, well, <laughs> well then, maybe I did. Oh, I actually did do something wrong. You get, hmm, what did we do wrong? What did we do wrong? Hold on. We can Synchro to Boxia but we can't do anything further. Uh, yeah, I'd probably just, I mean, I don't think you can do the combo unless I'm missing something, fat boy. But <laughs> fat boy sounds like I'm actually calling him a fat boy. But what I would do right here is I would just synchro summon if I could into the Shishao and then Shishao's effect would go ahead and add Sword Soul Blackout. And that's still a fairly good thing. So, uh, uh, Fatboy, I'm not sure if you could do that combo you were saying. I didn't see the line if you did. Uh, and if you guys did, go ahead and post down below uh, in the comment section what was the combo to make that board. But this is still fairly good. Shishao plus Baron de Flor with a Sword Soul Blackout is <laughs> perfecto. But that is pretty much all that we have for the deck profile today. If you want to see more amazing content, go ahead and check out these videos. As, of course, we do stream on Twitch also Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard. I hope you are having an amazing day, and of course, I'll catch you on the next video.